Dear fellow citizens, I am writing to inform you about a critical issue concerning the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation CDCR, and its recent actions that threaten the principles of transparency and justice. Recently, the CDCR has opened an investigation into a YouTube channel that has been dedicated to exposing the inner workings of the state's correctional system. This channel has bravely shone a light on the conditions within our prisons, the treatment of inmates and the broader practices of the CDCR. Its content has provided invaluable insight into the realities behind the walls, insights that are rarely accessible to the public. The initiation of this investigation is a clear indication of the corruption and criminality that pervades the CDCR. Instead of addressing the issues raised by this channel, the department has chosen to target the messenger. This move is an apparent attempt to silence the truth and intimidate those who dare to speak out against misconduct and injustice. It is crucial to understand that the actions of the CDCR in this instance are not isolated. They form part of a broader pattern of behavior aimed at concealing the truth and maintaining a facade of propriety. By investigating the YouTube channel, the CDCR is trying to divert attention from the serious issues it faces, including allegations of abuse, neglect and corruption. This situation is not just about one YouTube channel or one department. It is about our fundamental right to know what is happening within our state institutions and to hold those in power accountable. It is about ensuring that justice is not only done but seen to be done. I urge all of you to stand with the creators of this YouTube channel and demand transparency from the CDCR. We must not allow this investigation to proceed unchecked. Instead, we should call for a thorough and independent investigation into the practices of the CDCR itself. Let us remember that in a democratic society, the truth must not be silenced. The voices of those who dare to speak out against injustice must be protected and amplified. Together, we can ensure that the CDCR is held accountable and that our correctional system operates with the integrity and transparency that we all deserve. Here is the following email indicating an investigation has been launched. Dear Google user, on May 13, 2024, Google received legal process issued by the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation directing Google to produce records related to Google accounts that are linked or associated with a specified identifier. You are receiving this email because your Google account is an account that is linked or associated with a specified identifier in the legal process. The agency reference number or case number on the legal process is OIA 0779-2024. Unless we promptly receive a copy of a filed motion to quash that is file stamped by a court of competent jurisdiction, Google may provide responsive documents pursuant to applicable law such as the Electronic Communications Privacy Act. See 18 U.S.C. SS 2701 itsec. In most cases, the file stamped motion to quash must be received by Google within seven days of the date of this notification. The California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, CDCR, has recently attempted to incorporate principles from Norway's correctional system into its own framework. Norway's correctional system is renowned for its rehabilitative approach characterized by humane treatment, reduced recidivism rates, and a strong emphasis on reintegration into society. While these principles are commendable, their direct application to California's corrections system faces significant challenges, leading to a debate on their feasibility and effectiveness. Fundamental differences in societal contexts. The first major hurdle in applying Norwegian principles to California's correctional system is the stark difference in societal contexts. Norway is a relatively small, homogenous country with a population of around 5.4 million people and it has one of the lowest crime rates in the world. In contrast, California, with a diverse population exceeding 39 million, faces much higher crime rates and a more complex social landscape. These societal differences play a critical role in the functionality and success of correctional policies Norway's system benefits from a strong social safety net, low levels of inequality, and a cohesive approach to social welfare, which are less prevalent in California. These fundamental differences create a challenging environment for the direct transplantation of Norwegian principles, infrastructural and resource constraints. California's correctional system is plagued by infrastructural and resource constraints that are less pronounced in Norway. 
overcrowding is a persistent issue in California's prisons, exacerbating tensions and reducing the capacity for individualized rehabilitative efforts. Norway's prisons are designed to house fewer inmates, allowing for more personalized attention and better living conditions. Implementing Norwegian-style reforms in California would require a substantial reduction in inmate populations or a significant increase in prison infrastructure, both of which are daunting and costly propositions. Furthermore, Norway's correctional officers receive extensive training in rehabilitation and conflict resolution, equipping them with the skills necessary to foster a humane and supportive environment. California's correctional officers, however, often operate under more stressful conditions with fewer resources, making it difficult to achieve the same level of rehabilitative engagement. The retraining of existing staff and the recruitment of new personnel with a focus on rehabilitation rather than punishment would demand considerable investment, which has not been forthcoming. Political and public resistance. The political climate and public opinion in California also present significant barriers to adopting Norwegian correctional principles. Norway's criminal justice approach is supported by a broad consensus that prioritizes rehabilitation over punishment. In contrast, California's political landscape is more divided, with strong factions advocating for tough-on-crime policies. Public sentiment in California has historically favored punitive measures, influenced by decades of high-profile crime and media coverage. Shifting this mindset to embrace a more rehabilitative approach would require a profound cultural change, which is a slow and uncertain process. Recidivism and reintegration challenges Despite efforts to emulate Norway's model, California has struggled with high recidivism rates. Norway's success in reducing recidivism is attributed to its comprehensive reintegration programs, which include education, job training, and social support for former inmates. California, however, lacks the robust infrastructure needed to support such programs on a wide scale. Budgetary constraints coupled with a fragmented approach to post-incarceration support hinder the state's ability to provide consistent and effective reintegration services. Without addressing these systemic issues, California's efforts to reduce recidivism through Norwegian-inspired reforms are likely to fall short. Cultural and institutional inertia. Institutional inertia within the CDCR also poses a significant challenge. The long-standing punitive culture within California's correctional system resists change, making the implementation of rehabilitative principles difficult. Correctional officers, administrators, and policymakers accustomed to a more punitive approach may resist the paradigm shift required to embrace a rehabilitative model fully. This resistance can undermine reform efforts, leading to half-hearted implementation and poor outcomes. Conclusion While the principles underpinning Norway's correctional system are admirable and have proven successful in their context, their direct application to California's correctional system faces significant challenges. The differences in societal contexts, infrastructural and resource constraints, political and public resistance, high recidivism rates, and institutional inertia all contribute to the difficulties in successfully implementing these reforms. As such, the CDCR's agenda of adopting Norwegian principles is unlikely to achieve the desired outcomes without substantial and sustained efforts to address these underlying issues. The path forward may require a more nuanced approach that adapts the core values of rehabilitation and humane treatment to the specific realities of California's correctional system. Thank you for your attention to this critical matter. Your support and vigilance are essential in this fight for truth and justice.